So we're going to talk about cycles of matter, how material is going to move around through an ecosystem without actually being used up. So if you remember from our previous stuff, about 90% of all the energy is actually going to be lost at each trophic level as it's going through there. Matter, however, is going to be recycled. So if you remember, we were talking, we had our primary producers, and then the things that eat them, and then the things that eat them, and then the things that eat them. And as we go up, I'm losing about 90% at each step. That's where we got the 10% rule. Most of that is being lost as heat, and the sun is constantly needed to fuel this. Matter is going to be different. Matter is never actually used up. It just cycles. It's just changed from one form into another. It's never created or destroyed. The carbon that I am breathing out is going to be inhaled by something else, which is going to be consumed by something else, etc., etc. All of these things, the materials, water, carbon, nitrogen, and phosphorus, they're never used up. They're never lost. They're just changed into new forms. So let's start by talking about the water cycle. Water is going to move between the oceans, the atmosphere, and the land. So of course we're going to be having some of the water evaporating, then turning into clouds, then precipitating, and then run off. Water is never actually used up. So first off, we've got precipitation, transpiration or evaporation, and then of course runoff. So precipitation is going to be any one of those things, rain, hail, sleet, snow, any one of those. Transpiration or evaporation is going to be the water actually rejoining the water in the sky. Trees are going to be giving off some of that water through transpiration and of course evaporation from the sun. And then runoff is going to take whatever is on the land and that's going to get washed into the lakes, the rivers, the oceans, and of course the cycle is going to continue. The big problem with runoff is that whatever is on the land is also going to make its way onto the land and the rivers and the oceans, bringing with it potentially things that you don't want there. So here we can see the water just moving through there. Precipitation, runoff, that's some transpiration there. We've got evaporation, and of course condensation back into clouds. Carbon is going to be needed for all of our macromolecules. If you remember back to our carbohydrates, lipids, nucleic acids, and proteins, they all need carbon in some form or another. There's a bunch of different things that are actually going to add carbon to the air. Of course, you can see some of them there. You know, animals just breathing out or dying or burning of things is going to release it. There's only one thing that's actually pulling it back down. So respiration, decomposition, burning of fossil fuels, and even volcanoes are all going to be adding carbon into the air. And the thing, the only thing that removes carbon from the air is, of course, going to be photosynthesis. That's the one thing. So when you're cutting down a tree and burning it, that's sort of like a double damage to the atmosphere. You're taking out the one thing that was pulling carbon, and of course you're burning it. So you're releasing that carbon into the air. So we've got a whole bunch of different things that are releasing it, but only one process is pulling it back down and storing it. Nitrogen is a little bit different. Of course, we need this to form our amino acids and nucleic acids. So with the proteins and your DNA and RNA, both of those are going to need nitrogen. However, the problem is nitrogen is the majority of the atmosphere. Three out of every four molecules you're breathing in right now are nitrogen. However, you can't actually use that nitrogen. It's unusable by most life. So what we need is we need bacteria or other microorganisms that are going to convert the nitrogen gas into an ammonia fertilizer through what is called nitrogen fixation. So here we can see the elemental nitrogen, and of course that's going to go down into the roots of plants, and there you have these bacteria that can convert that nitrogen into something more useful. So here's kind of the nitrogen cycle. We've got things that are pulling it out, and then we've got these bacteria that are releasing it back into the air. And it's always going to be going from one form into the other. It's never used up. It's never wasted. So nitrogen has its own cycle. Some of that nitrogen is going up through those denitrifying bacteria, and then we've got those nitrogen-fixing bacteria. And actually lightning even plays a role in this, helping convert some of the nitrogen. Phosphorus, our last one, is going to be very different. Of course, we need phosphorus for our nucleic acids, DNA and RNA. If you remember back to you know, the phosphate sugar base, phosphate sugar base, the things that made up the backbones of DNA and RNA, of course, that red stuff in there, that's phosphorus, okay? But it's in a different form. It's called phosphate. But of course, at its core, of course, we have phosphorus there. Phosphorus is going to be different, though. It's not actually in the air. If you look at the places that phosphorus is found, it's found in the water and it's found in the land. You're not actually breathing any phosphorus in or out. On the land, we would find it in both rocks and soil. And of course, the rocks are going to break down and it's going to go back into the water. And then if we were to go in the water, we would find it dissolved in the water into its various forms there. So we can get phosphorus a whole bunch of different ways. Animals, of course, are going to eat stuff and then poop it back out. It's going to go into the water and then geologic upthrust where those mountains are created from the earth. That's going to be putting phosphate from the water back onto the land. But this is the one cycle where it doesn't actually go into the air.